And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of E-Electric Productions. Tonight we are very honored to have a wonderful guest with us here this evening, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mr. Schwarzenegger, it is always such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming out. Now, Arnold, I know you're here tonight to promote your newest film, uh, Killing Gunther, I believe is what it's called, and I had the honor of getting to see that last night. And I have to say, I'm a little bit disappointed. Honestly, I've come to look forward to your movies, even some of your lesser movies are still some of my personal favorites. Whether they're a guilty pleasure or not, that's beside the point. But I've come to expect a certain high level of quality in your films that you should be somewhat picky. Now, I understand you've been trying to get back into the spotlight, and so pickings have been a little bit slimmer. However, I don't feel that this movie necessarily credits you in the way that you may want to be credited. One of the main things in this movie is that you are not the star. No, not at all. In fact, you don't show up until the last 15 minutes of the movie. And at that point, you do dominate the ending. However, it seems almost to be too little too late, so to speak. So let's talk about the movie itself a little bit. So the movie is a ragtag group of lesser known assassins who are looking to take you out. You are the top hitman in the world. You have reached the pinnacle of the hitman game and you are their target. Now the ringleader of the hitmen is played by Taryn Killam. And Taryn Killam is backed up by his best friend Bobby Moynihan and these two individuals go ahead and go out and recruit six to seven other hitmen to join them in their escapade to try to kill you. Gunther, the top hitman in the world. Now the main character also has a personal vendetta against you in the film, which I won't get into here, not trying to spoil the film. And in having a personal vendetta, he is very driven and doesn't always think through exactly what he's doing or how he should do it, making some very poor decisions later on in the movie. Now in the beginning of the film, it's very obvious that it's low budget, the special effects are, are woeful, the set pieces are cheap, there's not a lot going for the film, and the movie uses a certain film style that I am not particularly fond of myself, and that's the shaky cam. There is a documentary crew in the movie that is supposed to be following around these lesser assassins who are trying to prove to the world and to the, well, mostly I suppose to the hitman world, that they are able to indeed kill you. So they have this film crew following them around, documenting what they're doing so that when they kill you, they can have that proof. So the whole movie is done in sort of a mockumentary fashion with these this very small film crew recording everything and us getting to see what they're recording. Normally I run from these movies as fast as I can. However, in this movie, given the colorful ensemble casts of kind of bumbling hitmen, I actually was quite drawn in in the first half of the movie. There was something about their energy and their synergy together that I really enjoyed. And I found myself quickly forgetting about these complaints and qualms that I had with the movie and its budget and set pieces and whatnot. And it was given way to me simply enjoying the character interactions, how they would handle these situations that come up, their different styles for committing said assassinations and hits. It was, it was all very, very enticing and very playful and very much a win for the movie. However, unfortunately, as these other hitmen exit the movie towards the middle of the film, um, for different reasons, the movie is left on the shoulders of just a couple of actors and actresses, and unfortunately, I feel that they buckle under the weight of carrying the film. In the beginning, the movie moves along at a quick pace, the characters are interesting, the plot is enjoyable enough, albeit silly, but enjoyable enough that I found myself looking forward to the next scene. The halfway point really starts to drag the movie down and I'm afraid that's when the movie went down the tubes for me personally. I found watching these few characters that were on the screen, they were not interesting. They continued to draw out parts of the movie that did not need to be drawn out. New plot devices were added to the film that never even received any sort of closure at the end of the movie and the movie sort of lost its identity and what it was trying to do. I don't know if it tried to become more than what it ever could be. I don't know if the producer and director lost sight of their original vision. I don't know what happened, but the movie 
desperately needed saving in the last quarter of the movie, and even with you coming in in the last quarter, I'm afraid it was not enough to save this film. In the last quarter of the movie, after we get through the painful middle section, uh, your character is actually introduced and seen, and I have to admit I was a little disappointed, Arnold, in all honesty, because the trailer showed a lot of you, and it looked like you were woven throughout the film, but you really weren't, and I actually felt a little bit deceived by the trailers, and trailers will do what trailers do to draw in the crowds. I understand that, but nevertheless, I found it to be sort of a cheap hit. But with your characters actually appear, with your character actually appearing at the end of the film, I was hoping for a lot of closure for different plot lines and a powerful ending. It didn't happen, Arnold, did it? No. It was really a very weak ending that relied too much on ham-fisted humor and things that I was waiting to receive closure on never even were addressed in any way, shape, or form. It really went from bad to worse. And by the end of the film, when the credits rolled, I sat there waiting for the credits to roll all the way through, thinking there must be another scene, and there was no other scene. I don't know if the director and producer found this to be clever, or if they thought people would continue to think on the film, but in all honesty, all I found myself doing was immediately wanting to warn other people to be very wary going into this film, as it's a very unrewarding and unfulfilling film in the end. Now, there's some good laughs to be had, and there is some definite enjoyment, especially in that first third of the film. But if you are expecting this film to carry its weight all the way through, and if you are expecting a strong ending, and if you are expecting a great performance by our wonderful guest here, then I'm afraid you'll be sorely mistaken. And Arnold, it pains me to have to say this, because I am a big fan, and I, I really feel that you put a lot into the end of the film as far as your character goes, but I'm afraid that the character they gave you to play just was not enough for this film. So with that being said, I personally would say that this movie is one to get at a very, very cheap rental if you really want to see it, or better yet, just wait for it to come to Netflix, which I'm most certain that it will in very short order. But as always, Arnold, thank you again for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being such a great audience here this evening. Love having you on the show. Anytime you guys want to stop by, we would love to have you. You guys have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you on the next Electric Productions.